Ooh, this is about to be good, Jose. This is a moment. This is a moment. What is the interest you are paying for not overcoming your fears? Let's go a little further. What is the interest you're paying for being imprisoned by your fears? Your greatest sense of satisfactory always came after you've taken the biggest risk ever. I thought about that. I thought about that. Your greatest sense of satisfactory always came after you've taken a risk that has pushed you to the limit. I'm talking about after you've taken, after you've, Jose, after you've overcame something that in the midst of it, you doubted yourself. I'm talking about after you've overcame something that once you saw the presence of it, you ask yourself, should I really be doing this? Right? Like, after you've risked more money than you've ever thought possible. Your greatest sense of satisfactory. Now what happens is I, I thought about something. I was, I was processing some information last night and I asked myself this question, Jose. I said, why is it that the satisfaction comes after I take the greatest risk? And I thought to myself, what, what truly happens is, let me tell you this all. What truly happens, Jose, is in that moment, in that moment, Jose, what we've done is we've broken past our own limitations. We've overcame our own limitations. Now, the only limitations that we have in life are the ones that we set on ourselves. Like, we aren't born with the limitations. Like, if we look at, I know we heard the analogy before, like, how many times after a kid falls do you tell them, stop trying to walk? Never. Right? And the kid won't try unless you brainwash the kid into believing that they can't walk. So watch this, Jose. As an adult, who has brainwashed you or what are the self-limiting beliefs that you've anchored your actions to? Come on. <laughs> Come on, Jose. What are the self-limiting beliefs that you have anchored your actions to? Okay, so so let's dig deep on that, Jose. Like you, like once I, I come up something. And like once I tell myself these things, I didn't have to ex like I'd be expounding on them to myself because I need them to make sense so that once I tell it to people, once I give it to people, they can be like, oh, because every week on the show, Jose, our goal is to move the financial needle in somebody's life. Right. We want you to get over the hurdles. We want you to get past the things that you've anchored your own self to. Right. So, OK, let's think about it. I'm like, I'm going to give you an example. Prime example. I'm talking to George earlier. I got to use you, cuz. George comes to me and George says. How, he, didn't, he, he didn't ask me, did I get some of the GameStop? Right? That wasn't his question. He said, how much of it do you have? Am I lying, cuz? He said, how much of it do you have? I said, oh, you know, I just, I just sprinkled a little bit on it. He said, how much do you have, though? I said, all right, I said, in my, in my, in my, in my long-term account, I didn't use it in a recession portfolio because those funds are, are accounted for. I said, but in my long-term account, I probably got about... Three hundred thousand dollars in cash over there. I said, so I bought about three to four hundred shares. Cuz looked at it and said, "Hey, I know how much that is." I said, "How much? I don't even calculate how much it is. How, how do you know?" He said, "It's about five thousand dollars." He said, "You spent about right about nine thousand for it." I said, "Hey, get out my pocket, dog! Get out my pocket, dog!" I said, "But." I'll probably be out of it by the end of the week, cuz. I said, why are you asking me that, though? He said, because I had $9,000, and I should have at least put half of it in it. He said, but fundamentally, it don't make sense. I said, well, what are some of the things I always say, cuz? I said, you treat a gamble like a gamble, you treat an investment like an investment, but make sure the investment, make sure the gamble doesn't make up majority of your portfolio. He said, cuz, you made $5,000 today just off buying whole. 
that, I could have did that. I said, well, why didn't you? He said, I was scared. He said, I was scared. I said, listen, I wasn't mad at him for saying that because what happens is, here's what I've learned, Jose. If he wouldn't have said that, if he wouldn't have been like, cuz I was scared, he wouldn't have met the thing head on. Because he could have easily said, well, this and well, that. And, and, what, and what happens is you suppress the actual thing that you got to move past. Right. And when you suppress the thing that you actually have to move past, you can't get over it. it be, if you suppress the thing that you need to get over, it, it becomes insurmountable. Right. Like if you keep suppressing Okay, watch this. Why don't you, yo, why don't you be in a relationship? Oh, man, because I'm busy working and I got this. No, 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 no. Those are, those are things that you, are, you aren't meeting head on. What is the thing that you are suppressing on why you, you don't want to be in a relationship? Why don't you start the business? Well, I got to let the kids go. Why don't you move out of town when you want to move out of town? Well, I got to let the kids finish. No, 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 no. What's the thing that you're suppressing? What's the fear that you aren't willing to meet head on so that you can overcome the said thing? Okay, try Well, the reason why I don't want to pack up and move to another state is because I'm scared to be by myself. Okay, now we can move past that. Now we can address that. Now we can put things in place. Jose, you got to have relentless execution in order to move the needle in your life on any level. Because I was, I, I was kind of scared because I ain't going to lie. I said, why were you scared? So now we got to get to the, we got to get to the issue of why I was scared. And I like it because he's right here. He said, the reason why I was scared was because all I had in cash was 9,400. I said, ah. So the reason is you're scared to lose the money. I said, the reason is you're scared to lose the money. I said, let me help you with that, cuz. It's only money. Now, you can say this because you can look at me and be like, Trap, you saying that right now because of where you are financially. But if you go look at my track record, I've always felt the same way about it. I've, that's the one thing, Jose, I can really say that the streets helped me give birth to was the idea of is only money. And when we say that, we're saying that from a perspective of, bro, we live in a world. I'm going to go back a little further. We live in a country. Not even going to say the whole world. We live in a country that prints money by the second. Okay? We live in a country that is right now about to pay $1 billion a day on interest for the debt that it has. Let that sink in for a second. Let that sink in for a second. We live in a country. We live in a country where the payments on the $34 trillion in debt is about to be $1 billion a day. That's not even paying the debt down. That's just the interest on the debt. Listen to me here. That's not, that's not paying the debt down. That's not even touching the debt. Excuse me. That is merely the interest. So here's my question, Jose, when we get to that. Ooh, this is about to be good, Jose. This is a moment. This is a moment. What is the interest you are paying for not overcoming your fears? Let's go a little further. What is the interest you're paying for being imprisoned by your fears? Okay, let's go a little further. What is the interest you are paying 
for being anchored to your fears. That's the one I wanted. I had to say it till it came out right. I had to say it till it came out right, Jose. I had to, I had to, I, that's called relentless execution right there. That's called relentless execution right there. Okay, chapter two of the episode 94, the name of the show is Jose, Relentless Execution. That's <laughs> Right? I got a question for you, Jose. What is the interest payment you are paying for being anchored to your fears? Financial fears? Emotional fears, spiritual fears, relational fears. Like, what is the interest you're paying? What is the interest? How is it showing up? And how do you consistently keep paying interest on the same thing? Okay, you cannot get a different result if you keep paying interest to the same thing. I ain't talking about paying off the house. I'm just saying you're paying the interest on the house of fear that you've built, that you are residing in. Come on. Come on. Like you can't pay the house of fear off. You can't pay the house of limitation off because you just paying the interest payments on being shackled to that house. You can't pay off the interest of regret because you keep be, you keep you keep building a house. And every time, watch this, Jose. Every time that you get a regret thought, every time that you get a fearful thought. Every time you give a, I'm not going to do this thought, you build another layer to the house. Come on. Come on, Jose. Jose, how many people in our chat have been paying interest on the fear? So the one thing the streets told me was it ain't number money. I'm not going to lie. I don't try to, I'm, I'm at a stage in my life, Jose, where I don't glorify the streets, bro. Let me make this clear. When you see the bacon soda, when you see the triple beam, that's not me glorifying the streets. I don't care what people be saying, right? When you hear the name Wall Street Trap, it's not me glorifying the streets. It's me in my own way trying to build a symbol of we can beat the trap. It's, it's a, in my mind, right? And the one thing we, the one thing I don't like that people do today is they take and say what your intentions were. That's the one thing. That's one. I don't care about people's opinions, Jose. But the one thing that really gets me is when somebody tell me they know what my intentions were. Right? Like you don't know my intentions wasn't to glorify the streets with this. My intentions wasn't to glorify the streets with this. It was to say, yo, we whipping up the stocks with the bacon soda and we weighing them up to get fair value on the triple beam. Wall Street Trapper was a, was a reincarnation of, yo, we not trapping. We not getting it out the mud no more. We getting it out the market. We building wealth one share at a time. So for you to tell me what my intentions are means you know what I'm thinking. And I don't think nobody know what I'm thinking because half the time I don't know what I'm thinking. It's coming to me as I go. Right? So, so don't let people, watch this, Jose. Don't let people take your interpretation of something and paint it the way they want and make you second guess what you're trying to say. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 